This is the new name for one of the six segments of London's overground train line, the Liberty Line. Sounds more like any generic train line in any town USA, if the USA actually had any functional public transit. Sadly, it's the actual new name for one of the renamed segments of the overground, and it's not even the worst one. Hi, my name is Evan Edinger, and I make videos about London and whatever else I fancy. So if that sounds like something you fancy, well, you can click the subscribe button, please. So London has a pretty great public transit network. And if you're wondering why I say public transit as opposed to public transport, it's honestly the same thing. Public transit's just the American term, and I just prefer the way it sounds. Anyway, you've got the London Underground, which is mostly underground, and then you've got the London Overground, which is mostly shit. <laughs> They're always slower and only really useful to those living along the orbital route looking to travel somewhere else not that useful. That being said, the overground is an incredibly vital part of London's transit network. I like to bully it, but it is vital. And one of the biggest things that separates London public transit from those of the American cities that have passenger trains is having trains going around as opposed to just to one central point near downtown. If we only had trains running in radial lines that went to and from the city center, it would make traveling between different suburbs on public transit more of a nightmare. Or realistically, just a really long bus journey. Looking at this map of Chicago's public transit network, for instance, you can see the train lines all go downtown, but if you wanted to go from Cicero on the blue line all the way to Jefferson Park, well, your fastest method would be to go downtown and then back out. I I just wish that overground trains were more frequent. I've lived near Gunnersbury Overground Station, Peckham Rye, Rotherhithe, Canterbury, Shepherd's Bush, South Tottenham. I've lived near a lot, yet most times that I've lived near an overground station, I choose not to take the overground because it's just never really that convenient. But one of the things you might notice about this map of the London Overground is that they all just kind of look the same, all orange pieces of spaghetti. And even though there are distinct routes like that of Gospel Oak to Barking or Hyber and Islington to an early death, it's pretty hard to tell all the routes apart, especially compared to the underground where everything has a different color and it's easy to tell apart, especially for tourists. Except for the Northern Line, of course. Split that thing up already, please. Now, when I first heard London was going to be splitting up the overground into individual lines, I, and I think most others, were really excited. This makes so much sense and would be super useful to people that are visiting London. Well. Kind of. The only reason I can imagine a tourist actually winds up in a Harrow and Wealdstone on the overground line is because it sounds kind of like a shop in Harry Potter, but <laughs> you're gonna be disappointed. Now, currently, if there's any fault on the overground line, anywhere on the entire overground network, you'll be told as such. But that's not really that useful information if you only take the Eastern segment and there's issues on the Western segment. So giving each segment individual names would make reporting faults and such a lot clearer. But many of the overground segments already had names the locals referred to them as, like the crowd favorite, the Goblin Line. Goes from Gospel Oak to Barking, Line, Goblin, Goblin, come on, that's fun, and an arguably British as hell. But I'm pretty sure that the people tasked with naming the new lines are neither fun nor British, but some sort of generic corporate think tank looking to find not names that sound nice for a train line or that people actually say, but ones that they think would score them the most points in some sort of bizarre political theater. The perfect word to use here would be smarmy. Just really incredibly smarmy. And I'm not really interested in the whole culture war element of the names, but yes, I'll be complaining about it a little bit, at least. I am British enough, right, to be able to complain. I've seen people online saying that the other recent names have also been political, such as the Jubilee Line, named after the Queen's Silver Jubilee, and the Elizabeth Line, named after the Queen. But coming from someone who's absolutely not monarchist at all, I've never really considered these to be political names. Maybe that's a me thing. I would have preferred the Fleet Line to the Jubilee Line, which was the original name named after one of London's rivers that, you know, it's just historical before they bottled it up and put it underground. But also, I did prefer the name Crossrail before Elizabeth Line came along until I realized that no one's gonna call it the Elizabeth line. We all call it the Lizzie line. That's way more enjoyable and I guess less attached to the monarchy. Or more realistically, Lizzie is just a lot more fun to say. The Lizzie line. No one's going to say, I am taking the Elizabeth line. No, it's, it's, come on, who's who's saying that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Now I'm gonna be ranking these new names based on three metrics. One, how they sound, the most important aspect of all these. Even numbers, colors, or names really work well for train lines. Like I'm taking the 55 to the 76 to Conjahawken. Flows right off the tongue, really. Two, how the names actually fit in with the local area. And three, how a Londoner would actually use them in a normal conversation. All right, so enough jibber-jabbering. What are the new names that they came up with? So for the line from Watford to Euston, we've got the Lioness Line. Really just doesn't sound good, like the opposite of rolling off the tongue. Lioness Line. Blah. Now, rather than pick a name that the locals use, this one has a shoehorned bit of feel-goodery in there because the line passes through Wembley, where Wembley Stadium is, which I guess has had nothing significant happen there ever, except one time in 2022 when the women's soccer football team won the Euros. That's it. It's to honor the women's football team win from two years ago, and they're called the Lionesses, so there it is. Uh, you could have tried harder with this one, maybe. Like, what did it cost to rename these again? 
Oh yeah, six million pounds. It's like they were trying to do something smarmy, but even if they announced the name, the year of this win, when it was hypothetically the most relevant to people outside of the niche that had any idea what was going on, it would still just feel weird because that's just not a thing to name a line after. It's just not. Maybe this is just me as absolutely not a sports guy, but if it was named after some men's rugby team win from like six or seven nations or whatever it's called, it would also feel stupidly insignificant. Sports team won a game. Hooray, you, you did it. Now that being said, I'd like to say I do appreciate what they were going for here. I just wish it didn't have to be sports related. And even if it did, I just wish it sounded good for a train line. That's the main thing. <laughs> now, in terms of how well the name fits in with the local area, I mean, the whole Linus has won a game at the stadium near the station that is along the line. It's a bit of a stretch. Even the Wembley line might have sounded a bit better here because the name just sounds better than the Lioness line. And if we compare it to the original pitch name in 2015 that Boris Johnson's government blocked, yes, another reason to hate Bojo, the Watford local line, Eh, I don't hate it. It does what it says on the tin, but I guess it is a bit boring. And so at the end of the day, I guess the Linus line is fun. I don't want to give it a point because it sounds awful, but at least it was better than the last proposal for the most part. I am trying to be a little bit more positive about this since I originally thought about it. We are stuck with these names for the most part, so... Huh. But how would a Londoner actually use the term Linus line? Well, first off, I don't think they would actually say the word line. They would just drop that completely. Linus line doesn't sound too good. Just Linus good enough. Sorry I'm late. The Linus was a bit shit today. Don't know if I can make it in today. Linus just went down on me. Huh, actually, <laughs> that does sound pretty good. <laughs> it's not that bad. We'll get used to it. All right, next up, what do we got? Mild May. All right, so the train from Richmond to Stratford with Clapham Junction along the way. This is probably the line I've used more than any other, and so from now on, I meant to call it the Mild May line. You know what? That's also not that bad. Mild May line. It kind of flows off the tongue, sounds pretty good. It gets a point from me. Now, the reasoning for this name, because everything has to have a reason these days, is it's named after a small hospital in Shoreditch that played an important role during the AIDS crisis of the 80s. Okay, I mean, it feels like they're really digging to fit some sort of quota with these names, but it doesn't matter because the name sounds good, okay? Even though the line doesn't even pass anywhere near this hospital, um, they, they hit that quota. It's barely attending the local area, but it's just an empty gesture. Hooray. Now, the older proposed name for this line in 2015 that was rejected was the North London line, which, yet again, same as the last one, it did what it said on the tin, all right? It's a line, it's a North London. Not too exciting. I do think I actually do prefer Mild May to that, even in its natural context. Oh, Mild May's been acting up since acting central. It gets a pass. And as we keep going, I do just wanna remind you, even if the names are extra wanky, it's still better than having them all called the overground, in my opinion. Happy to hear you disagree in the comments, as long as you're not mean. Next up, the line going from Hybern Islington to West Croydon shall hereby be known as the Windrush Line. First test, it sounds pretty good to be a line name. Like, I'm not trying to be pointlessly negative here. The Windrush line has been named in honor of the Windrush generation, or those who came to Britain from the Caribbean after World War II to help fill the post-war shortages. I actually think, historically, it's a great name. The Windrush generation were really important to London's history, and I do think it's a nice gesture. I guess my initial issues with the name is that my brain more closely aligns it with, you know, the Windrush scandal, in which the UK government treated these people like illegal immigrants, causing many to lose their jobs, their health care, their homes. Some were even deported. Sounds like classic UK government treatment of immigrants. And as much as I'm like, oh, that's nice. They're naming an overground line after a group of immigrants. I'm also like, maybe instead of naming it after them, you could have, I don't know, actually supported the immigrants who helped build the country in the first place. Just a suggestion. But the line doesn't necessarily have any connection with the areas of London that have a high density of the Windrush generation in the first place. But as you know, the generic corporate board meeting room thought yeah, they'd earn some points back after the Windrush scandal. Maybe that'll balance things out and they'll be forgiven. But I think the main reason I don't really like the term Windrush line is because of what could have been. The line already had a name most locals called it, which was the Old East London Line, as the line was the original line built by, you guessed it, the East London Railway Company. But even worse, there's such a better name originally proposed back in 2015, the Brunel Line. The Brunel Line would be called as such as the line goes through the first ever underwater tunnel built in the world, built by famous engineer Mark Brunel. Either of those would have been great and were right there and were suggested by lots of people, but instead we get a performative gesture. Anyway, let's see how it's used in context. Sorry I'm late, guys. Win rush. Win rush never works. I'm sure the name will fit right in. <laughs> now, if you want to go from Liverpool Street to Enfield Town, you now take the Weaver Line. Weaver Line. Actually, I think that's the best one so far. It sounds natural. The Weaver Line is named after the Weavers, as many of the areas that the line goes through were known for their importance in the textile trade. Okay. Bit of a stretch, but you know what? It's historical and it sounds the best of the bunch. Also, very good pun potential here. Like, what does a Tory say after breaking all their campaign promises? Weaver Lion. 
no, no, <laughs> Weaver's acting up. I'm stuck in Chingford. Yeah, I mean, it sounds nice in a local context as well. All right, but what could have been? Well, the previously proposed name for the Weaver line was the Leah Valley line. And you know what? I actually quite like that name. It makes the most geographical sense as most of the line does follow along the Leah River, one of London's few rivers that they didn't bottle up and put underground. Yes, I am upset about this. I just want justice for all of the rivers of London that aren't the Thames, okay? Why aren't we hearing more about them? Can you imagine how catastrophic it would be if we had the Fleet River still? Uh, it used to be one of the biggest rivers in London before we put underground. But I don't know if you guys heard this. The mayor of London has proposed that London is going to be getting some new pronouns. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it's true. The pronoun suggested, Tay Thames. <laughs> you know what, you believed me before I'd made a pun. Anyway, you know what, the Weaver line gets a big thumbs up from me. And now I'm gonna need you guys to sit down. No fall from grace is greater than what happened to the Goblin line. The line from Gospel Oak to Barking, lovingly referred to by Londoners as the Goblin. You know, Gospel Barking line, Goblin. It's like Bakerloo from Baker Street to Waterloo. It's a perfect name. It's fun. It's not taking itself seriously. It's perfect. But the issue of the goblin is, as of 2024, there just aren't enough goblins in Britain for it to be enough of a performative gesture for. So it's now meant to be called the Suffragette Line. Why? You had a perfect name handed to you. You could have scored points with real people with a cool name. Instead, Suffragette. Does it sound like a good line name? No, absolutely not. Does it flow off the tongue? No. I'd be lying if I said it did sound nice, okay? Suffragette line, bleh, obviously we're gonna have to drop the word line. Suffragette, I just really hope people just keep calling it the goblin. You got that little local thing, like some people still call the Millennium Bridge the Wobbly Bridge, and I think that's fun. Brings a little bit more actual local history rather than just shoehorning in names that aren't necessarily relevant to the area. I believe their reasoning for the suffragette line was one of the leading members of the suffragettes lived around Barking. You guys really didn't try, but I guess you got six million to do so, so. Now, would you have guessed it, but the suffragette line did beat out the other names that were come up with by the generic corporate conference room, such as Peace in the Middle East line and Sorry for the Potato Famine line. I'm sure that'll make up for all of our previous mistakes. All right, time to see how would a Londoner actually use this? Ah, suffragettes experiencing delays. Guess women's rights have just rolled back a century. Ah, what about goblins' rights? All right, justice for the goblins. Biggest thumbs down for the suffragette line just because why? Evan, you, you don't appreciate women's rights? Obviously I support women's rights. I just don't support fake performative gestures. I don't want this to get spicy. I'm just saying suffragette line is an awful name for a line compared to one that the people of the area already use that is so charming and British. Goblin. You just can't be fun these days, can you? Thor and Oakenshield didn't die for this. And finally, the most generic and least British name on the list. The Liberty Line, taking us from Romford all the way to Upminster. Sound alone? Liberty is kind of all right, except the word is so bland and has lost all meaning because Americans can't use a bloody tea towel unless the word liberty is written across it in red, white, and blue. But it's named the Liberty Line because supposedly liberty is a defining feature of London. What? What? So is breathing. Why don't we call it the breathing line? Because breathing is something that Londoners do. <laughs> Might be a little smoggy, but <laughs> what a vacuous name. <laughs> Liberty line. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe it's because I had to say with liberty and justice for all every school day of my life as a child in America, but it just feels like the word liberty has lost all its meaning. America kind of stole that branding, okay? Another country has kind of co-opted that already. And it, it just sounds lame. It sounds like you're taking yourself, yet again, too seriously, which is the opposite of British humor. Like, maybe we could call it the gray line. Why? London's pretty known for being gray. Gray skies, gray new builds. It's self-deprecating, so peak British humor. Or even the last syllable of liberty, T. Brits are known for their T. I feel like T would be so cute and quaint, the T line. Instead, we've got liberty. Awful. Now the previously proposed name for the Liberty Line was the Emerson Park Line. And even though that's just kind of like a station that's along the line, anything is better than Liberty Line. Liberty, big ass thumbs down from me. God damn it. Just imagine the world we could have lived in with Goblin and T. I would love that look. I'd like to be in that world, please. Now, I know the lines could have been worse. Like they could have been monarchy related, like the Charles Line or the Diana Line or the No More Harry Line. <laughs> Please. Names that make all the little monarchists go, oh yes, I love riding this line. It reminds me of Prince Charles before he became king. Okay. But even then, I think those names would be better than the Liberty Line. I feel like they have more historical connection to London and are also more well known to people that are outside of the UK. I think American tourists are gonna come in and be like, oh my God, the Charles Line? That's named after the king, oh my God. But you, no offense but also you, you know how you are. <laughs> he bullies his own people. Whereas I feel like if they see the Liberty Line, they're gonna be like, what do you mean? That's our thing. 
You can't call it the Liberty Line. I don't know why I did some sort of quasi Seinfeld impression there, but you know how you are. What's the deal with Liberty Lines? There ain't no Liberty here. I can't even carry a gun. What's the deal with Liberty Lines? I went on the Liberty Line and the cops stopped me for carrying a gun. I thought I had Liberty. I thought this was America. Anyway, my expectations were low, but it's just disappointing because they still managed to disappoint me. But being disappointed is a defining feature of being a Londoner, so I guess at the end of the day, it is on brand. Now, sometimes I script my videos, like my video on UK developers, and sometimes I just jot a few ideas down and riff off of them. This one in particular, I actually used a teleprompter, and I'm curious if you could tell. It should, in theory, not be too noticeable, but as a test, I'm now going to do an ad read, but half of it will be me reading the teleprompter, and the other half will be me just kind of riffing. And tell me which half you think I'm reading from. I'm gonna try and make this difficult. So, today I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the world's fastest virtual private network. I've got mine set up to protect my browsing history from any prying eyes, as NordVPN puts all of my internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel. Now, it doesn't matter if I'm on my phone, on my computer, 5G, Wi-Fi, I am completely protected and my browsing history remains private. They've got servers in 61 countries, so maybe if you're looking to open up your content library, maybe watch some Netflix, but you're like, ah, I need more content. Well, now you can watch US Netflix or French Netflix. It's up to you. And with a 30-day money-back guarantee, it just makes sense. So sign up today using nordvpn.com slash Evan, and you can get a huge discount and get four months for free. Thanks, NordVPN, for sponsoring and which half of this ad read did I read versus say off the cuff? Interested in your thoughts below. Otherwise, let's wrap it up. I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. I'm happy we got separate names to the Overground line as it does really make a lot of sense. I just don't know why they could have made them fun. You know, is that so much to ask? Anyway, if you want some fun, you can subscribe to my channel where I whinge every Sunday about something new. So uh, stay tuned, hit the bell, and I'll see you next Sunday. If you'd like, you can watch another video I've made about the Lizzie line when it came out, though I think that one is in desperate need of an update because things aren't so great with Lizzie these days, at least in my experience. So stay tuned for some more London TFL Transport for London videos coming soon. I'll see you then. Goodbye.